You can't touch this. You can't touch this. You can't touch this. Hi everyone, my name is June, also known as Nostalgia Memoir for my Instagram followers. Uh, to begin with, thanks for tolerating my uh, intro video. That was my first attempt to producing a stop motion video, so I hope you enjoyed it to a certain extent. I enjoyed making it. Today, I'm going to be reviewing my Bell Bullet Roland Sands Design Viva helmet. I purchased this at the RSD store while I was in Los Angeles. I got a discount at the store, um, but with California's wonderful sales tax, ended up being just over, just under 440 bucks. So it really wouldn't have been different if I purchased this online or Revzilla. I believe this retails for 450 dollars. So you can pick them up, look them up online. Um, it's just 50 dollars more ex expensive than the regular bullet. The Bell Bullet has been out for a while, but this is the bullet with the new graphics by Roland Sands. So the Bell Bullet Helmet was inspired by the original Bell Star Helmet. The helmet is exceptionally fit and ultra high quality detailed. Interestingly, there's not really a helmet that's comparable to this specific helmet in regards to the price range. Obviously for four hundred plus dollar helmet you can there's a lot of options but we're talking about performance helmet options such as Showy or RI or such so yeah and you can't really compare to that and if you're looking for a performance helmet like that um, you probably should be you probably shouldn't watch this review and stop right here. Also the closest thing you can really compare to is the Bell I mean Bitwell Gringo helmet which is a, literally half the price of uh, this bullet helmet but again in regards to the quality and the aesthetics of it it just doesn't meet um, come close to to this helmet itself but if we step it up you can obviously compare it to the the ruby helmets which just got recently got discontinued they went out of business but that again is at least twice the price of this helmet so at about a $400 range for a retro classic helmet Bell Bullet is the only helmet that's available. To start with let me go over some design aesthetics. As this is the Roland Science Design Viva helmet meaning Roland Science designed the graphics of this helmet there are some key elements that show that First is the RSD logo right here on the left but, uh, left cheek. This is not a sticker, it's actually a engraven um, permanent paint on it so you can't remove this and it's kinda cool. And also at the the hinge right here it says Roll and Sense Design RSD, Roll and Sense Design RSD around this, uh, this visor hinge. And from top view you get this beautiful uh, red this is not this is actually not white um, I don't know if it looks white it's actually a little bit creamy white and blue design line on top flowing through the right side and into the chin area so oh they have the look on the right side too so my bad another thing I noticed that this is very very well ventilated see there are ventilation holes one two three four right on your forehead there is a chin ventilation right here it also for the chin ventilation you can actually open and close it let me see if you can see it right here there's an open and close option right here and also there is a ventilation right here that's a ventilation so again compared to I don't know I, this is only comparable I'm gonna compare it to gringo as much as possible for detail um, and quality, this is significantly higher or better quality. So let's go back to the price. The special edition, such as this Viva Roland Sands, um, and there are a few, couple more, I think there are a few more, are more expensive than the standard bullet helmet, which retails at $400. So this is 450 But the difference is you actually get a second shield with it. 
So it initially came with this clear bubble shield, as you can see. And it also came with a replacement mirror flat shield. So if you think of it that way, one of these shields actually costs about $40. So you're not really paying that much more over a standard bullet. The standard bullet just comes with a single clear shield, either whether it's bubble or, or flat. Whereas the design ones comes with two shields, and so it's essentially you're getting, you're paying $450 for an additional shield, which ends up being about the same amount if you were to buy a regular one and buy a second shield. So it's in that way, if you think of it that way, it's, it's really not that much. So let me show you how the shield is replaced to begin with before I go into the details of what the quality is. So one thing I love about the the bullet over my other helmets, whether it be my full-faced regular helmets, um, DOT snow helmet, or my Bell Bitwell helmet, is the size of this view. As you can tell, the bullet has a huge, huge um, field of view right here. And when you're wearing it, it literally looks like you're wearing, a, it literally feels like you're wearing a open, open uh, faced helmet because it's so big you have zero blind spots on the left and on the right side of it and as we open up this is how big it is I wish I had a gringo to compare it with I bet a gringo comes up a little bit higher to here so gringo is about the size of a goggle opening wide area but this is just fantastic I, I love it and the fact that this opens and closes is so much better and it opens really nicely and it's very firm too it's not like it's gonna flip open where you're going 70 miles an hour on the highway and also it's held down by this magnet leather strap right here as you can see and I believe you can get this option in brown as well when you're buying this shield but it came as black um, so you lift this up and down it only is available on one side so so best way to remove the shield is there's a this is bolted right here. They recommend you use it use a coin to open this up. One slight concern of opening it with coin or a metal piece is that it's gonna get scratched. So you kind of have to be careful. So you twist it a few times and this becomes loose as you can see. So now this comes up, and this is solid metal piece, as you can see. It's very, very high quality. So it's not some cheap plastic that's holding you, holding down your uh, visor into your helmet. And this is the mechanism. And all it comes is it just comes off like this. Now before I do that, yeah, I got to do the other side as well. There we go. I'm going to fast forward this so you don't have to see it again. So now it's off and all you have to do is just, it falls out. Um, I mean, I think even wearing it without the visor, I think it would look cool. And, and look how big this is, this opening. Um, so it's great. To replace it, what you need to do is just place this right on on where the hinge is. Now the best way to do this is one to take off the visor while it's closed because if you have this opened it means your visor you're going to have to try to match it where it came off and it's kind of a little, a little bit tricky. So you do this and I thought putting this on was a little bit tricky first time so we'll see how I do this time. So this slot right here is where this thing is supposed to go and to match that, to make sure that matches. Oh, it's this way, okay. There we go, so it you can feel it click. You can turn it almost all the way with your fingers and then just the last 
few turns, you just need to use a coin, and it's solidly locked. Right. I'm gonna do the other side. I'm gonna fast forward it for you so you don't have to watch it again. There we go. So, just replaced my helmet. Um, it took a couple minutes, not more. And cool thing about this is that the bubble shield versus the flat shield, it make it, it makes the helmet look like a completely two different helmet. And so, almost in a sense, you're getting two different type of helmet. For one, you get a you get one with a regular flat shield, which you can get in three different colors. I think it's three different colors. You can get in clear and flat. Uh, color and the mirror color same I think with the bubble. I think there's there are four Let me just check Yeah, so with the bubble you can get the clear you can get dark smoke which is non-reflective but black Gold iridium which is gold, but like the mirror like this You can get a yellow one and you can get amber gradient, which means it fades darker from bottom to top With the flat shield you can get in four different color one is clear and dark smoke which is looks like this except it's not a mirror so you don't see the reflection um, third is the silver ir iridium this is what it is it's just a mirror color chrome mirror which is my favorite and you can also get the gold iridium in flat as well and they're all priced the same at forty to thirty nine dollars forty nine forty dollars all the same so now let's go talk more about the quality of this helmet. So I, I kind of talked to you about what the quality is like with the vents and outside. Now when we go inside, the big difference between this and again I'm gonna compare. I'm gonna have to compare it to the Gringo because it's the closest thing I can compare it to. Is that all of the inside is leather, and all the paddings are also removable. Um, I don't know if you can see right here. So it's it's beautiful quality. Very very soft. Uh, I don't know if this is suede, no, there's this got to be synthetic right here, but it's leather uh, all around right here. And I'm going to try to replace, take them all out. Um, I heard the cheek pads, you can get them replaced so they, you can have um, speaker inserts in there for communicators. But I don't know if that's true, you might have to uh, double check that. So it comes off like any other performance helmets. So here's a cheek pad that comes off. another cheek pad that comes off and then obviously your head pad comes off too right there so so once you pull all of these pads out you get the you get the mold inside um, and that's what it looks like inside now I'm gonna put this back in. So the inserts took a little bit longer than I expected to to put them back on. It was a bit harder, um, but I managed to do it. So let's talk about fitment. I am a medium comfortably in pretty much any other helmet I try on. Uh, my built walls are medium, very comfortably. My other full face helmets and like other helmets like Shoei or RI, they're all they're medium. And this is also a medium, but it is very 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 tight medium snug not painful but it is very very snug medium so I think the way this helmet is made is compared to let's say Biltwell Gringos I think it's about a half a step smaller than other helmets so and also I think it's a little bit more oval shaped versus round because I think Bitwell Gringos are very, very round helmets and they fit my round head very comfortably. But for this, my forward, my forehead and, and my back feels comfortably, but my side to side um, of the head, it, it, I, feel, I do feel the pressure. So I think, so I feel the pressure right here on my left side and then my right side right here. So if you're, let's say, if you have a Bitwell helmet and you're an, Let's say you're a very, very uh, snug medium, 
almost overlapping into large, I would definitely recommend a large versus a medium. So the reason why I took a medium is because I wanted to be more snug. I prefer a snug helmet versus a loose helmet. And I think this will eventually kind of form to my head size, hopefully. It's not painful, like I said, but it is pretty snug and you do feel the pressure at points around your forehead and the sides. Now let's talk about the downside of this. So the pros, let me just do a summary. Pros, I love the uh, field of view of this helmet. You almost feel, it almost feels like you're wearing an open face helmet. I love the air vents. I think this is going to come really handy in the summertime. Obviously it's really cool outside and so I don't really feel the necessity of it. Two, that it the visor moves up and down really quick, really easily. Um, whereas in built walls, you don't really get that. Although now you do get the visor that lifts up. Where was I? Next, another thing is the quality of it. It's high quality. I mean, the graphics is gorgeous. The leather inside and the build quality is 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 impressive. Now cons, obviously this is not a performance helmet and so you don't really get that exact comfort and fitment that you would in normally like a Shuri RF 1200 or a helmet such as that. It is a DOT but obviously it's not Snell. Uh, another con is price, obviously it's expensive, $400 or above, it's not cheap and so it's, it's a big investment for just a helmet that looks good. I mean it's good quality but obviously it's not really a $400 quality in regards to performance in overall all around. Next thing I noticed is a lot some people have asked me on Instagram how the noise is and I didn't notice it first time I, I used it because I wasn't really going fast I was just riding around town I didn't notice anything it's very quiet until you go to highway and once you hit above 70 miles an hour, I don't know what it is, but you hear a very, very high pitch wind noise. I have no idea where it's coming into. I don't know if it's there are coming in through the visor slots where it's not fully sealed or whether it's coming through one of the vents, but it is almost to a point where it's unbearable. It's one of those high pitching kettle noise where it's hot and it's pretty loud. Um, I I don't usually don't mind no wind noise, and I don't I never wear earplugs. But if I'm going on a long tr long trip on this, I definitely am gonna have to wear a earplug. Now the weird thing is I I ride a Thruxton with the club mum bar, so it's a little bit leaning forward position. And so weird thing is at about this angle, that's where the noise becomes really unbearable. I mean, unbearable, it means it is painful in, in your noise. But the moment you tilt your head straight up, um, it, it's a little bit difficult to do that on my Thruxton. But if I move position my body where I'm a little bit straight forward, it becomes dead quiet. And so it's so weird. I, I don't know. I think the designers missed this point where it have, just happens to be my uh, bike's sitting position um, of wind noise. But literally, if your head is straight up, if you have a more of a upright position bike, then you probably won't have position have any problem. And surprisingly, it is very, very quiet, like any other full face helmet. Or even if you're at this leaning position and you turn slightly left or slightly right, that wind noise completely disappears. So I don't really know. I'm gonna have to test it out a bit and maybe tape some holes and the edges around it and see where that noise is coming from. But like I said, that's one of the big cons that I've I've notice um, this advantage is is that I rode up to Park City yesterday and it was just it hurt my ears and my all other helmets helmets I've had no problem with with noise now another con is I, I mentioned about this ventilation here it's great it feels great when the winds coming in it really really feels good and I think in the summertime it's gonna be good but somehow the wind comes in at an angle I work I wear glasses that it actually hits on the on the outside corner of my eyes, just right here. And so I don't know how, but the wind just hits this way, and I don't. Know, it, it it dries out my eyes for some reason. Um, maybe I need to close this 
because uh, you can close the shin ventilation. Maybe I haven't tried closing it, but the wind actually does come in a little bit too much than I, I like to. Um, maybe I'll say, you know, maybe I'll have a different opinion about it in the summertime when I'm sweating my head off. But uh, yeah, that's that's how what it is. So just to sum up, um, let me just go over pros and cons again. So pros about this helmet is the design itself. This is such a pretty helmet. It, regardless of what graphics design you get, whether it's plain color, solid color, I've seen I've seen all of it. They also just came out with a carbon fiber graphics and matte black graphics. That's six hundred dollars. I'm hesitated. I'm right now hesitating to say whether that's worth it or not. Um, at that price, probably not. Second is the field of view, how wide it is. It just feels like an open field, open faced helmet. Another, you can change the bubble shield or the flat shield, so you get two different drastic, drastically different looks with it. Quality is good. It's a uh, good quality inside, both outside. Um, on the con side. It's a little bit tighter, snug than I, I'd like it to be for round-headed people, I think. For a little bit more oval-shaped head, I think you'll be okay. Another thing, another con is the the wind noise at about 70 plus miles an hour. So in a highway, it's not really ideal if you're sitting at an angle or leaning forward slightly a bit. Oh, another thing I noticed is that this chin right here is very close to your mouth. <laughs> So I don't know if this is supposed to be like this, but like when you're wearing the helmet and you stick your lips out, you can touch this right here. And also if you press it, your helmet down this way, it'll touch your chin. And so I don't know if that's safe or not. It really can't be safe. And if you crash with your front um, impact, I think it's gonna hurt your chin quite a bit. I mean, obviously it's better, definitely better than not having um, a full face helmet or an open face helmet, but I don't think this is designed well. Or maybe I just have a big chin that sticks out, although I don't think I do. I have a pretty normal sized chin. And so it's so weird this part it touches your chin when you stick it out a little bit. So that's it. Overall, I'm very satisfied with this helmet. I'm glad I got this over. I was gonna just get a gringo and then get it custom painted, but the graphics is so pretty. You get compliments all around. I've gotten, I've already gotten compliments a few times. I've only taken it out twice, and it's just unique, and it's, it's great for just everyday writing. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. You can reach out through my blog, underneath link underneath, or uh, just comment on the comment section below, and I'll try to uh, get back to you as soon as I can. So, thanks. Have a good day.